Hey everybody and welcome to DC Fine Art where we are working on part three of this color pencil piece and I will be using my brush and pencil touch up texture uh, on this piece so you'll be able to see me actually put that into action on this one so that way also you can kind of see what it does um, what I use it for and I mean it's just something that definitely helps out especially when using um, when you reach like a limit on where your color pencil doesn't take any more or your paper doesn't take any more of the color pencil so then you can go and use your touch of texture which basically comes in a little it looks like nail polish is what it looks like I'll actually leave the description below I try and put the description below of all the supplies that I use um, and the this one is definitely a main one that I'll, I'll end up putting that in the description below. But here I am actually starting out. I know on our part one, we worked on the wood. We did a first layer of that. Part two, we worked on the wood, adding the second layer to the wood grain, also completing the flame of the candle and doing the light reflecting, like the yellowish color and we're kind of reflecting off of some of the pieces of wood. We did that in part two. So part three here, we are working on this uh, little wick and the candle and the little plate. And I went ahead and used, I mean, I can't rattle off every single color that I used on this piece, but I will try and do my best on um, letting you know what I've used. So far on this little candle wick that I actually colored in, I used black and then I used a red and a yellow um, just for like the center piece where it's like got that little flame or that little ember inside of the wick. Um, it, it's really hard to be able to see from this, but it is there. It's just harder to see because of how tiny it is. Um, so it's one of those things that once you see the picture up close or in person, you'd be able to see that. Now, this is not exactly real time like how I work. It is a, just a tad bit slower than this. I just sped it up just a little bit. And it's not much, but just a little bit. Just to where it can kind of, um, you can see what I'm doing, but yet it's just a little bit faster than normal. So... Don't think that my hand, if it makes some sort of weird twitches or goes in there a little bit quicker than normal, that's just because I have it sped up just a little bit. So anyways, working on this candle, I know I had my reference photo. I actually had two different reference photos for one candle. I liked how one other candle looked compared to the other one. And I just kind of like intertwine two candles into one, like kind of using some things off of one candle, the way it looks, while using another thing off of the other candle that I, I that I liked, which could have been, I liked one had a really nice color to the candlestick, the other one had a better flame on it, one, uh, you couldn't see a wick on there, one had a wick to that, that I could look at, um, and then the, I'm going to end up doing some wax like dripping, kind of like if it's melting and dripping down the candle. And neither one of the reference photos had that in it or on it. So that part there, I just kind of threw in on my own because I wanted some candle wax kind of melting and dripping down the candle. So I went ahead and uh, put those in there my own self. And yeah. So right here, I'm just adding in some different shades, some different values that I can see in my reference photo on one of the candles. And then I think with this color here, I use like a darker brown or if not a little bit of a black color around the rim where it's kind of burnt and you got that dark kind of lip around the candle. And then I try to use, I think on that one there, it was a little bit too much of a beigey color that I used. I think it was more like a a brown ochre or a yellow ochre. I think it's more brown ochre on it. And so I kind of backed away from that. I used it only for like maybe some shadowy parts on it. But I just kind of grabbed my pencils when I first start working on this. 
I grab my pencils and start tossing them in there. I do a little little bitty pieces at a time just to kind of see what color is what. And if I like that color, then I'll use majority of it. If I don't like the color and I put a little mark on there and I'm like, uh, oh, I don't really like it, then I'll just back away from that. So there I'm using, I do believe it's like more of my yellowish pencil there. It is, let's see if I got that one. I know I've been using the light flush 10% on there for like a yellow, but I do believe that's like a golden color. That one I don't think I put back where I should have, but I am using more of a yellowish kind of tint on the top. And then I'll mix in some of my yellow ochre in there too, just to kind of dull it down because it is a wax pencil. I don't want it to look identical to the flame up above. So I have to be careful with that. Now there I'm taking, going from, um, I do I believe I used Golden Sun and then I tapered it down to like a terracotta. And then I went from, actually, also some of the, I actually went from the, uh, let's see if I can do this in stages. I went from the yellowish kind of color that I have there to like a, a golden sun, to a dark honey, to a, terracotta and then I use a little bit of the natural russet as being the darkest point of the candle down below. So I kind of went in stages when it came to that going from light to dark and then I also did that on the outside. So where you see me right there drawing the lines like of the candle base there I also went up and started putting like some of the other little bit lighter colors. Let's see, in this picture, you can definitely tell I'm going a little faster than normal. <laughs> but you see how I'm shading it down? I'm going from yellow to like that terracotta color or that russet color. Just kind of putting it in there. And then I'll take that yellowish color and I'll go over the top of that terracotta. So that way, whenever I go to blend, I'll have that yellow or that yellow mixed in with that as it gradually goes all the way down. And it has a lot more smoother blend and transition. So I'm going from light to dark here. I'm making sure to add plenty of layers because whenever I do go to blend with my all mess, I want to make sure that I have enough pigment on my paper. So even though you see me uh, do some of those colors already, I probably went over that at least twice to three times, but I will be going over it again. So there's one layer, as you can see, and then see, I go over it again. So that would be two. There's one, there's two, there's three on that bottom one. One layer. Going over it again, two. There's three. And there I'm taking my yellow. And see, I'm going over the top of it, adding in some yellowish tone to it. So that way it goes smoothly with the rest of the candle. So I'm bringing that on down, further down. So there's like three or four layers there. There's already four on there. Then I go back over it again. So we're looking at about four or five layers of color pencil. Add in another one. So it's about six layers. <laughs> So quite a bit of layering and making sure you have plenty of pigment on this paper before blending with OMS. Especially with a candlestick because a candlestick is more smoother than wood. So I definitely had to make sure that I had another more, a lot of pigment on the paper to get more of a smoother blend and, and transition with this candle. I don't want it to look rough like the wood. And here I am going over it with my Chinese Derwent Chinese White. Now, you don't really notice too much of a change with the white whenever you go over the top of this, knowing that it does have quite a bit of layers on it already. But this here helps to where 
it smooths it out a little bit and then it also puts a fine very fine layer of white in it so it kind of um, mellows it out or dulls it out just a little bit whenever I add in that white but whenever I go to blend it's going to actually that white's going to mix in with those other colors and it's going to look more of a kind of like that kind of like a candle consistency it's going to have like that waxy look or that you know that smoother lighter tone otherwise it would be these really bold colors sticking out really really bright if i didn't add in that white that white really does bring those colors down to more of a softer tone even though you can barely see it or even notice it from this this angle i definitely know it it absolutely helps now here i am with the oms now when i dipped it in the oms i took it dipped the brush in it and then i wiped like one swipe across my paper towel that way i'm not like dripping with all mess i do not want that much all mess on my brush it's just like a little small dip wipe it off on a towel and then i go ahead and start blending now when i do my blending with my oms and my brush not only am i blending in the colors i'm starting obviously from a light going down to my darker colors but i also want that really smooth transition so i'm kind of bringing it up a little bit some of that darker color up a little bit and if it's too much then i'll kind of come back down with the uh, yellow and just kind of bring in tone that down so i'm actually working the color and the detail i do do that too i work the color and the detail with my brush when i'm using oms so it's not just putting down color pencil on a paper and just making it completely smooth, I can get texture, at least a look of texture, you know, just by maneuvering, moving around some of my colors there. I can move around a little bit of it. There I am trying to move, move kind of position that a little bit, taking it on up. And then I'm kind of dabbing in there with some of the color that was in the mid-tone, I'm kind of taking that and just kind of dabbing around on the top, just kind of bringing it up in there. So I do a lot more with my OMS and my brush than, than just blending the colors, you know, smoothly. I'm actually working in a design with it. I guess you could say that. <laughs> All right, so here's my touch of texture. Now I had to wait until that OMS is completely dry. Do not put this on whenever it's still wet. Make sure everything is dry. And then I took my little a touch up texture by brush and pencil. Looks like a little uh, nail polish bottle. And then it's got the little brush on the end. And I'm taking that and just dabbing around on the top of the candle where I want to put in some whites or like a lighter color. And see, I'm using this, and you can tell, you don't really see too much of my color pencil coming on the paper. So in that case, I went ahead and got my Derwent Chinese White, because usually that one there will actually stick to a paper, even when your other pencils will not. So that usually shows up a little better. But since it didn't, I went ahead and used my touch-up texture there, and I just went ahead and put it on even more of the candle kind of going down where i'm wanting some of that waxy drip stuff that i want from my candle melting from the flame making sure i didn't put any there because i don't want to put my pencil on top of wet that while it's wet because yeah i wouldn't work that way and see i got a little bit of white on there but not not a whole bunch and that's still wet so while that dries i'm going to go ahead and start on my dish down below and here i'm just kind of testing out some different colors now i did use i think whenever i first started i was using some of the primrose um and then i went ahead and switched it over to a little bit more yellower color so i went over to maples ochre 
on the Karen Dosh. Now I have been using, um, so far with the candle, the only three um, color pencils that I've been using on brand wise has been the Caradosh Luminance and the Derwent Light Fast and, the Der and also the Derwent Drawing Chinese White. So I don't think I went to my, my pro colors on this one. I do believe I just stuck with those those two different types of pencils. And there I'm kind of adding in more of my uh, golden sun to the top of it. At least I think I did. It's one of the two. It's like some of the yellowish, kind of getting that yellowish tint. I may have actually stuck in a little bit more of a yellow color, like the, I think it's like Indian yellow out of the Caran d'Ache Luminant. So I'm just kind of outlining the little plate or little dish that it's in. Working my circles and just kind of getting, filling in the color of the dish because it does have a little bit more of like it goes from light to the darker center where the wax is kind of building up and staining the plate or where it's sloshed and kind of spilt on the plate a little upward, you know, from movement. And then it's got some of the puddle of wax down below. So, yeah, here I'm just kind of filling in, adding in layers of this. Uh, I do believe it's a primrose on that one. No, no, actually it's not. I want to get this one right. It was the Naples, Naples Ochre. I do believe I used my Naples or Ochre on that one. The Primrose was a lighter one that I went to. And then the last I went to a highlight of white on there. So, but we still haven't gotten to that. Now there's some of my honey. I think that's like my dark honey in the Derwent. Derwent Light Fast range. Yep. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a color. I will go back over it with a white. That way it starts um, smoothing it out and lightening it a little bit. I don't want it to stand out like a really bright, you know, yellow rim all the way around it. I don't want it to be that kind of like in your face kind of look. I want it to be more softer, more smoother and transition a little bit better than that. But you have to start out in layers. So here I am just creating some of this waxy, slushy buildup stain like this in the plate from the wax. Do you believe I'm also using my dark honey for this? Kind of looking at my reference photo and then just kind of making the shape of a puddle of wax that's in there. And here I'm kind of giving it a little bit of a hint of a rusty color, kind of like a little bit of a darker color. In there and then I'm taking my I think it's the dark flesh oops now I'm dropping stuff um, the dark flesh is what I use for the darker areas areas of this There is some of my lighter color there, which I use the, I do believe it was the light flesh 10%. I'm 
And there's some more of the dark flesh. And all I'm doing is just looking at my reference photo and kind of going off it. Um, the reference photo that I used on, on these was from Pixabay. Now this candle here, it was really kind of blurred out, like a lot blurred out. So it wasn't really the best reference photo that I had, but I didn't really need that much detail in it anyway, because, you know, it's not really the main focus of this piece. So I, it, it didn't really, um, I didn't want everything to be completely sharp anyway in detail. Because I got my little hamster over there who's at, uh, sticking out of a teacup looking at those little muffins. That, that I definitely wanted to be more of a centerpiece. Even though that wood background really does add a big pop to the picture, so... I don't know. We'll just have to see how it all comes together. This is what I pictured in my mind, and and um, I'm hoping it comes together nicely. But see how I'm kind of adding in this white. Now, that's another thing I wanted to say. I added in the white over the yellow, so that way it kind of gives it more of a smoother look and not like in-your-face bright yellow. Now, here you see me marking these little areas in white over white, and it is hard to see when I do this. But I do it because that way when I go over the top of it, that white will stick out and it'll be lighter. And I can always lighten that part for a highlight. Now here I'm using my Chinese Derwent Chinese White on the touch-up texture that I had put on the uh, candle. And you can see that it's already working because my white is actually going on the candle really, really smoothly now. Now it's actually sticking. I'm having no issues putting my white pencil on the paper and if it's not something that you're like wow it's not super super bright white it's not really going to be because underneath it's kind of I mean if I put it on darker like if it's darker then it would be you know you can see it a little bit better but if you're wanting something really really super white then using some of that touch-up texture that I used on here but mixing it with the brush and pencil titanium white powder mixture you mix a little bit of that, make it into a consistency of like a paint consistency. You can actually take a brush and make your whites even whiter by using that, by brushing it on. And it is safe for color pencil. It's meant for color pencil. It is archival. So definitely a must have. But here I'm adding in some of my darker tones. And also on the wax where I added that white onto the candle, Whenever I go back over the candle again, adding another layer to the candle, I'm actually, you'll, the white will actually pop out even more just by adding in or in and around another layer. And, and you'll see this here in just a second. Right now I'm putting in some of my darks there. I'm using my um, dark flesh. And you could use the dark flesh, or you could also use your Castle Earth too, and the Karandashi. Both of those, both of those two, I kind of switch back and forth in. But here we go. I'm adding this another layer to it, and I want you guys to see this because, you know, you can barely see the white. It is there. It shows up a lot better in person, though. But it actually shows up a whole lot better once I add in my my next layer of color pencil and kind of working it in and around the wax that I want. So. Just lightly going over again and transitioning from dark to light is what I'm doing going up the candlestick. And you'll just see it, you just see it popping out the white. It shows up a whole lot more. The brush and pencil works, uh, the touch of texture works amazing. Absolutely love it. And this is the first time I'm using this type of paper too. It's the Bristol, Bristol Vellum. So that's what I'm using for this one. So there's that candle waxing. You can kind of see the detail and you can, you can definitely see a lot more of it. 
you know, I'm kind of working uh, back and forth like I normally do. I usually jump around all the time. So <laughs> working on this wax that I have puddled here. Remember, I stuck the white, the titanium white down there, like made some highlights down there that you couldn't really see. Now I'm going over it again just to make sure those are in there. Because those will actually stand out. The white will actually pop through and stand out a whole lot more once you put your, um, you use your OMS on it. But you just have to be gentle not to rub in circles and blend it completely out. You kind of want to go with the direction of like which way the candle wax kind of turns in a direction. Here I'm going to go back up to my candle wax and start creating round edges on some of these drips that have dripped down. Now, like I said, if I wanted to create something with a little bit more of a highlight to it, like really super bright white and do like little specks of like a reflection bright white, I can do that, but I have to do that with my touch and texture, that same thing I use in the little nail polish looking thing, and use my titanium white by brush and pencil, the powder, and kind of mix those up and, and I can create um, super bright highlights. So here I am adding some more uh, layer layers to my color pencil. That way I got enough pigment on the paper. I'm noticing that I needed to uh, re-highlight some of these areas in dark. And then now I'm going down here to the bottom and doing the same thing, kind of putting back in some of my darks and my shadows in the areas that I want it, just very lightly. See that my edge is not completely smooth the way I want it, so I am going to go over that a few times <laughs> to get that smoothed out. Adding some more layers underneath. And I will have to go back with the touch up texture on the top of the plate also, so that way I can get more pencil to stick to the top to create more of a smoother edge and a little bit more of a darker edge to the top. Here I am adding some more white to it. Adding another layer. So I've already got several layers on here. So it should give me a nice blend. And after I get done blending it, then I'll end up letting it dry completely. It has to be dried completely. This, you know, some of this that you see me go right back in after I use the OMS, I actually had time there to let it dry before I went back in. So definitely let that dry. Then you can go back in and add more layers to it. So here I am with my OMS, just lightly going around the edge. And then smoothing out that lip that's on there that has that transition of really bright yellow to, you know, a lighter yellow. <laughs> Just kind of smoothing out the edges there, kind of pushing it up a little bit to have a little bit of a fade going on. I'll start out with a lighter color first, and then I'll go into the darker area and then start blending that in. And I don't blend it all over the place because if I do it too much, then it will actually go into some of my other areas that I may not want some of that darker color in. So you have to be careful. I 
I'm dipping my brush and cleaning it off again. Now I'm going with the top of this yellow and blending in. And I'll blend it down into it just a little bit. Dip some more, dry it off. And then I will go in here and see how I kind of do a little circular shape a little bit at the very beginning, not to smudge too much all over the place. But I kind of go in the shape of where I want it. I'm kind of moving that color around. But I want to move it in my benefit to make that texture or that look of like a built up wax that's in there. moving out some of the shadow there. So I took some of that darker color that was already there underneath the candle and just kind of pushed it out just a little bit to add a little bit more of a shadow in that area. So I'm kind of adding in my texture and adding in all that stuff uh, while I use my own mess. Now this is the tricky part here. Whenever you guys go over it again, like this is already the second time I've already went over this candle with OMS. So Whenever you dip your brush, make sure you wipe it off, not just one little wipe. Make sure you wipe it really good on that paper towel, almost like you're drying it off before you come back and do this. Otherwise, you're going to have too much on your brush. It can actually remove off your layer of color pencil that you would put on and start bringing up the underneath. So you want to be very careful not to basically go on it with a dry brush. So I made sure it was really dried off on my paper towel before I went on it. And you can still see how it looks wet. And, and that's just how it is. It really does stick to your uh, brush without you knowing it. And I do that whenever I add in a lot of the pigments. Like do a second layer like that. Not to do overdo it with the OMS. There I added in some more color. Some more shadowing. So my second layer on that. Adding in some more of the darks where I had them. So this is just the second layer, so I'm going over it again. Here I am going around the plate again for my second layer. Adding in some more of this yellow. It's more of a, and that's a dark brown that I'm underlining underneath. I do believe that one's my castle art. Could be. It's really, really, it's a darker brown. Actually, that one's not castle art, is it? Yeah. But it is a darker brown. I just kind of picked out any darker brown. That's all I did. Or at least a brown. And then if I wanted to, I went ahead and since I picked out a brown and I could really see that it was a brown, I went ahead and started adding in. Yeah, it's a Derwent Life Vest, so it was a it was a type of brown, but it was really, really dark. And so I had to go back in and start adding some black to it. That way I can make it a darker brown. So even though I didn't grab a darker brown, I still added some black in there. So that way I could turn it into a darker brown. Which I could have just picked out a darker brown and been done with it, but it's okay. I just went the extra mile on it. Add some extra color in there. Now I will be finishing up in part four. There will be a part four. There will be several parts to this because I have several different things in this piece that I need to do. And I know I'm working, juggling my uh, my business and juggling my job on the side. So, I mean, I just, you know, I can do one like section at a time with this color pencil piece. But you get to you get to see it watch the progress, I guess, with this. So there will be a color pencil piece part four. 
and then um, next week I should also have a palatable pack review to do. So I will be doing some catch up. And yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video like you just seen right there. Please click the like and subscribe if you're new. I would love to have you guys on here. Click the subscribe, hit the like, definitely, so that way YouTube can put that out. And yeah, and thank you all, everybody who's been here before. Thank you all for joining me on this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and watching me use the touch-up texture on this. And I will see you all next Thursday, you guys, or at least next week. There may be a bonus video. You never know. Maybe maybe might do the new studio setup of the new table. You never know. I'll see you guys next Thursday. Bye.